interurban trolley cars. And the ones on upper, we, New Jersey didn't have much. They just had a line from North to Trenton with a really a regular trolley car just painted differently. But in upper New York State, between Albany and Buffalo, they had various interurban lines of tremendous big cars. That's the way they looked to me. Uh, and oh, I thought they were beautiful. I never, I, I think I got to ride on them, I know I did, one time, maybe twice. And they ran, for example, from Syracuse to Albany, or Syracuse, Syracuse to Utica, Syracuse to Rochester, Syracuse, I think there may have been a line from Syracuse to Buffalo, I'm not sure. But they had these various interurban lines, and they said that one time you could take an interurban, it would wear you out, but you could take, you could go, almost cross country, almost, certainly into the, well into the Middle West, by taking interurban trolleys. Uh, of course, you'd have to be changing <laughs> pretty frequently and it would wear you out. But that's the extent to which there were trolley cars across the country. But that area is gone. And uh, very dependent on the automobile uh, for transportation just about in every the airplane. Uh, I mentioned the trip by interurban, and I, as a young kid uh, visiting Syracuse, we didn't have much in the way of interurbans in North. Uh, they had a slew to me of interurban lines, and those cars looked beautiful and big. Uh, they had a line to Auburn, and then the another line to Auburn, New York, and another line to Rochester. That's a pretty good distance in Syracuse, and, and then in the other direction to Utica. And they were big babies, and they sure made an impression on me. Uh, I traveled on them a little, I mean, when I was up there. Newark had only one line running to Trenton, and there's simply one of their better uh, city street cars uh, dolled up a little with different colored paint, and I guess better seats. Hey, one act play. Uh, the, little, the happy journey from Newark to Trenton. That, what brought that to my mind was that somewhat less than happy journey in our Model T Ford to Philadelphia and back with my father and mother. On the way back, it started raining, and of course you had side curtains in those days, so you put those up. And it was difficult driving. My father uh, was, when he was born with giving sleeping tablespoons of, uh, uh, pay, uh, of uh, good humor, well, uh, that's a niceness and all that sort of thing, but what he wasn't given was much patience, and uh, he, it was evaporating rapidly, and it was a tense silence in the car, and suddenly I began hiccuping, and uh, the, the silence became even more tense. Uh, finally, I thought, you know, I just go, yeah, yeah. and I finally, did you stop that thing? <laughs> finally, he got so bad, he pulled up to one side of the drugstore someplace, and I went in and got a drink of water or whatever, and it seemed to manage to cure it. But uh, a happy journey from Newark to Trenton, this was a happy journey from Newark to Philadelphia. I'll always remember one scene when I was a kid, say I was eight or nine years old in Auburn, New York, at the uh, depot for the uh, interurban cars, and it was a tableau, uh, not a, unintentional. Uh, this boy, a young man, apparently was leaving for the big city. It, it, it sounds like a play, but it wasn't. And the mother is screaming and carrying on, begging him to stay, and all this. Of course, there's a crowd of interested uh, spectators. <coughs> and this may uh, have been partly theatrical in the sense that uh, people did things like that in those days. Instead of uh, saying goodbye to the kids, they would go through some theatrical, what they thought was a proper thing for them to do, uh, uh, just carry on like mad, beg them to stay and all that. 
I remember the young man's face was nonplussed. I guess nonplussed. He was nonplussed. Uh, isn't it funny? I mean, the, the things you, the, that you remember. Uh, as a, something that corollary to that. Uh, my grandmother died in 19. My maternal grandmother died in 1911. And my mother came up from Newark to take care of her. It's a long story of why my aunt Mame in Syracuse didn't didn't feel called on to do it. She died at the home of a younger sister. Uh, oh, I can't think of her name. Uh, in the country in Manlius, but uh, at the time of the funeral, when they brought the body to the grave, I mean the casket to the grave. My Aunt Mame hadn't uh, had done not one damn thing that in taking care of Grandma. Tried to throw herself into the grave. You know, all this, all well, this emotional stuff, which was a standard performance. Even as a little kid, I understood that that was more or less a standard performance, what you were supposed to do. My mother was not that tight. Uh, so the lady uh, doing the screaming while her son was leaving home was putting on a standard performance and probably grieving also. Anyway, uh, I, I lived on trolley cars. I still think they were the, the greatest means of transportation ever. Uh, you didn't depend on the automobile then, although of course it was available. You, uh, I went to school for four years at St. Benedict's. I took the Clifton Avenue trolley, which was a <coughs> fairly modern trolley, and then the uh, and it transferred on Springfield. Now, the north-south, that's Springfield Avenue trolley, and some of the others, were much bigger and better cars than the uh, ones that ran, which apparently were older models on the east-west uh, lines, uh, which tells you not anything in particular. And at idle moments, I would just sit and watch the motorman. Uh, he had two things. He had a, a uh, handle with which he used the air brake. He turn it to the left to break and do the right to turn it off and so on. And on uh, his left hand, he had a controller uh, handle that he used to control the speed of the car. Uh, so there were a lot of trolley cars in my life, and that was a big part of it. 